Hello and welcome to the solution video to spicy question number 38. So in this question we've got lots of different cylinders. We've got the original cylinder A, then cylinder B is cut from this cylinder, and then we chop cylinder B into n smaller cylinders. But we're told in the question that the original cylinder A is similar mathematically to the smaller cylinders. So let's take a closer look at cylinder A. We know its diameter, that's 96. The radius must be half of this, so 48 and the height is 360. Now let's look at each of the smaller cylinders. We're also going to need their diameter, radius and height. Now before cylinder B was chopped into the n smaller cylinders, it was the same total height as cylinder A. So if it was the same height, it was 360, and chopped into n cylinders, this means each of the smaller cylinders will have the height 360 divided by n. Since the smaller and larger cylinder are both similar, we would also divide the radius by n and the diameter by n. So the diameter is 96 over n and the radius is 48 over n. In the question we're told the total surface area of the tube and the n smaller cylinders is equal to this number here. So let's try and work out the surface area of the smaller cylinders and the tube. Starting with the smaller cylinders, let's look at the circular ends of them. So each cylinder has two circles, one on the top and one on the bottom. The area of a circle is pi r squared, so it's pi times the smaller radius, which is 48 over n, all squared. And if you square this, you get 48 squared over n squared. Now that's for each of the circles, but there are two circles on each cylinder, so we need to double this. And that's for each cylinder, but there are n of those smaller cylinders, so we'll times this by n. From here, we can cancel one of the n's out. So if we cancel this n on the end with one of the n's from the n squared, we end up with this. And if you multiply that 48 squared and the 2 and the pi, you end up with 4608 pi over n. So that's for the circles. Let's also stick with the small cylinders, but look at the curved surfaces. The formula for the curved surface area of a cylinder is pi dh. So we're going to do pi times the diameter, which is 96 over n, times the height, which is 360 over n. Now that's for each of the smaller cylinders, but there are n of those, so we'll multiply this by n as well. And once again, we can cancel out one of those n's, so we're left with this, which gives you 34,560 pi over n. So we've now finished with the smaller cylinders, it's time to look at the tube. We're going to look at the rings of the tube first, they're the two ends. So the ends of the tube look like this. The larger of those two circles has a diameter of 96, and the smaller one has a diameter of 96 over n. The area we are after is this area shaded here. To do this, we'll do the area of the larger circle, subtract the area of the smaller circle. So for the larger circle, pi times radius squared is pi times 48 squared, and we'll subtract from this the area of the smaller circle, which is pi times 48 over n squared. If you work out the first part, you get 2304 pi, and for the second part, you get 2304 pi over n squared. Now this will give you the area of one of the rings, but of course there's two of those, one on the top and one on the bottom, so we need to double this. So you'll get 4608 pi minus 4608 pi over n squared. Now sticking with the tube, let's also do the curved surface area on the outside. Again, we'll use the formula pi dh, so it's pi times the diameter times the height, and this one's not too bad, it's 34,560 pi. Now there's one more surface we need to find, and it's not so obvious. This is the surface on the inside of the tube, which is the hole that's left behind when we remove the cylinder B. So this is the curved surface on the inside. Now if you think about it carefully, that surface will have exactly the same area as the curved surface of all of the smaller cylinders. And we've already worked that out. It's 34,560 pi over n. So these are all of the surfaces. To get the total surface area, we add all of those together. So if we add them together like this, let's add the first two because they're in terms of pi nicely, you get 39,168 pi. The next three terms are all over n, so we get 73,728 pi over n. And then we've got the final term, which is over n squared. So we end up with these three terms, that's the total surface area, and we're told in the question that's 42,232 pi. We now just have an equation to solve in terms of n. Let's take away 39,168 pi from both sides, that gives you this. Then we could multiply both sides of this by n squared. If we multiply the first term by n squared, we get this. The second term by n squared, we just get 4608 pi. And the right hand side by n squared, we get this. At this point, we probably divide through by pi on both sides. And then we could get all of the terms on one side, and you'd end up with this quadratic. Now this is not the nicest quadratic in the world, but you were allowed a calculator for this question, 
So if you use your calculator, you'll get two solutions, which are n equals 24 or n equals this. Now, since n is an integer, it's the number of cylinders we get. It can't be the second one, so we'll lose that. And the answer to the question is n equals 24. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.